Aloha and welcome to Life Journaling and Dash for the 22nd of November, the year is 2021. We're your hosts. I'm David. Next to me, who's not talking to me, is Holly, our golden retriever. Across the table, a very loving Hana and Yuvela. Today's reading has come to us from Matthew's chapter 11, 12, and 13, and it's called Separate. And we'll get into that, but first, would you say a prayer for us? You want to burst out in song with that? Say a little prayer for me. Say a little prayer for me. All right. Lord Jesus, thank you so much for this beautiful day. Thank you for letting me have a dog that loves me so much. She licks my face. Thank you for teaching us and guiding us with your word. Amen. Amen. Do you want to go first? Or? I'll let you go first. Okay. Um, today I'm pulling from Matt. Matthew chapter 13, verses 47 and 48. Once again, the kingdom of heaven is like a net that was let down into the lake and caught up all kinds of fish. When it was full, the fishermen pulled it up onto the shore. Then they sat down and collected the good fish in baskets and threw the bad away. Kind of like here on the coast of Oregon, you can see a lot of fishermen. My observation, Christ's followers are like the good fish in the world, and when we are separated, we go with God. The non-believers or bad fish are thrown away. The application in driving on the road with our camper, we always say we play our own game. This means we go at our own speed. That is safe for us. And we don't care what other people are doing or how unsafe others may drive. As Christ followers, we also need to live separate ways and do what is right in God's eyes. My prayer, Lord, give me strength to live for you and not live for quick gain. Assist me to be your light in a world with darkness. Amen, Pastor David. Do you think you're more inclined to do your own thing now or when you were younger? Depends on what we're talking about. Um, I think that... Depends on what we're talking about. Does it also depend on who you're talking with? No. I think so. For me, um, if family is going to go somewhere or do an event, that's an experience. And I'll go with them even though I may not like. Um, can't think of something I don't like to do. Uh, I'll watch, watch a sporting event on TV. I'd rather see it in person, but sometimes a family member wants to watch it on TV and I'll sit there so that I could watch it with them, that kind of thing. But um, no, as I'm older and I see that choices have consequences, I'm more likely just to buckle my own seatbelt and drive the speed that I need to drive. And if it feels unsafe, I'm going to slow down versus just going like the pack and going fast. And that would also be for doing other things. Yeah. You also mentioned that you forgot to mention that you have a Jeep that has no power to it. So it goes extremely slow. It does. But I'm just talking about slick roads and things like that. Mm. Or like the RV can go much faster downhill, but I'm not going to do it because I wouldn't feel as comfortable driving it. So I'm going to do my own game. And if something doesn't match up with God, then I no. Mm-mm. Maybe in high school I would have chosen differently, but not now. Uh -uh. What did you write about? Mine is uh, Matthew eleven twenty eight through 30. Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. My observation come to me jesus jesus invites people into a personal relationship come to me it mentions several places in the bible where the pharisees had created all these laws and burdened the people with restrictions jesus is telling them that this is not what god intended being a christian is not a list of do's and don'ts Jesus is telling them, learn from me, follow my example, listen to what I preach and practice. My actions align with my words. 
Jesus is also telling them to take off the yoke of restrictions placed on them by the Pharisees and replace it with his yoke. In my research, J. Hamilton Keithley III described to take off Christ's yoke meant or means to submit to his person as the one who is gentle and meek, as the one who is gentle and caring and concerning for us. It means to put yourself under his leading, to join yourself together with him. But the difference is, he is a yoke mate, and this is how he gives you rest. He's alongside with you. And then Mr. Keithley gave an example of a uh, ox and a little ox who were uh, plowing, but basically the big ox was doing all the work and the little ox was just following along. Well, that's Jesus doing the work and you're just tagging along there with you. Mr. Keithley also mentioned that the only times God's yokes become overbearing is when we try to take over and do the pulling or handling the load by ourselves. My application. I was raised in a church where there were many don'ts. I was not to go to the movies, go to dances, bowling, because they served beer. I was not supposed to wear makeup, play cards, or wear fingernail polish. There were many rules. Even now, it is easy to translate good habits into restrictions, such as reading my Bible every day. This is a trap, a lie from Satan. This is why it is important to have the Word of God in your heart. Reading my Bible is not a burden. It is not a yoke. Reading my Bible is doing as it says in Matthew 11. I am learning from Jesus. My prayer. Thank you for your Word to teach me. Because of the way I was raised, it is easy to get caught up into the thoughts of what I'm doing is the list of do's and don'ts which makes serving God a heavy yoke around my neck. But what I need to remember is that there are these are lies from Satan. He loves to twist our thoughts. Reading God's Word daily is about a personal relationship with God. I want to communicate with God daily so I get to know Him better. It is not because I have to read His words daily. It's because I get to spend time with Him. Amen. That's a do that you get to do some time with God versus you can't meet with him. I think it's really important to remember that um, there are so many things that you can do and when you get started on them all of a sudden maybe the joy is gone and then you feel like you're obligated to do those and that's when it's important to stop and evaluate and say wait a second why am I doing this? And when you realize that you're doing something not because you have to or because you made that commitment, but you're doing it because you love God, it changes it. But Satan really wants to get you wrapped up around um, making it feel like an obligation. And then when it feels like an obligation, then the yoke becomes heavy. And all he's doing is twisting your thoughts from making you think obligation and thinking of that you're doing it out of love that you can't wear this or you can't listen to this song or something like that instead we get to listen to certain songs that glorify god or we get to dress a certain way that is presentable that um, doesn't attract attention for a different reason well, it's almost like you get a phone call from your son. You drop everything that you have, and you want to listen and talk to him. Well, that's kind of like reading the Word. It's not like, oh, I'm going to go do this. It's like, wow, I could go spend time with this person, with God. And that's something you want to do. Tomorrow's readings are Matthew 14, 15, and 16. And would you like to say a quick prayer? I do. Father God, thank you so much for your word that you're putting into our hearts through contemporary mentors or through the mentoring in the scriptures. We pray that we will be a light for others to see, that will shine your message, and that others will come to know you or be encouraged to know you. 
We ask this in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen.